Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back once again. I'm Nicodemus Kane. Today is February the 24th, 2022. I am slightly, what's the word, exacerbated? I don't think that's the word I'm looking for. Um, I'm a little... I'm a little beat up and run down. Uh, of course, I didn't. I didn't record a video yesterday because on what was yesterday, Wednesday. So Tuesday, it rained. It rained really hard all at once. We got more than an inch at least and of course our basement flooded again because all of the all of the ground out here is frozen the water has nowhere to go we're already flooded as it is and it decided to rain some more so we got water in the basement once again uh, not nearly as bad as I did last week but still enough that I was stuck vacuuming the floors, trying to vacuum it out of our carpet, um, trying to get things, trying to get things to a point to where it's not, <laughs> it's, we're not overwhelmed by, uh, wetness I've got the fans running we've got some floor fans going just one thing after another uh, you may hear them in the background I don't know I don't know if they're I don't know if they're able to trip the uh, trip the noise gate or not but anyways um, I'm back today because we're going to read Psalm 114 um, I definitely need I definitely need a word of God today I definitely need to I definitely need to be pulled through this I need we need we need prayers that we can get this fixed we need prayers that we can fight through this. Um, but we definitely need prayers that we can hold fast to hold fast to our faith on this one. Because I am, I got to a point, I got to a point um, yesterday, no, Tuesday. I got to a point Tuesday where I started losing I started losing my faith in this house. Not in God so much, but in this house, in this choice that we made. And I was seriously about to pack up and give in. And I kept asking the Father all day, was this the right choice? Was this the right choice? Why would you have brought us to this point only to let us fail? And I was questioning him far too much. So I have I have asked for forgiveness on that for questioning him. I have thanked him for bringing us to this point. Um, knowing that he will take us further. But I have also asked him to help us as much as he can to fix this house. If we're, if this is the place where we're supposed to be, then Father, please help us. Father, please help us make sure that this is... This is going to be the place that you need us to be. This is this is where you want us. Help us help us get this house back on track. 
Because there were so many things, so many things about this place that have popped up since we've moved in that I, I question it constantly. I question it. Why did we, you know, stuff that we didn't know, just stuff that we didn't know when we moved in and slowly but surely, you know, we're finding out that the, the guts of this house, the inner workings of this house just have gone they've gone overlooked they've been overlooked they've they've never been really fixed they've never been touched in over 40 50 years things that have just fallen by the wayside and it's just now that they're starting to we're starting to see it and i'm starting to wonder uh I'm really starting to wonder just uh, how much truth the former owners gave us whenever they told us about the problems of this house. I'm really starting to wonder. So if you, um, if you are praying today, I ask you to pray that we can we can get this fixed. That this will be. This will be easy for us to fix. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for... I'm not asking for uh, people to come here and help or to, you know, buy somebody to come here and do something for us. I'm definitely not asking for that. I am just asking that whatever it is that can be done to this house to make it better, that it goes easy. It's a... I know that's a material thing, but it's our house. It's it's where we live. It's where God has brought us to. We we prayed over this place, and we this is where He led us. And if this is where He led us, then He brought us here for a reason. The things that are happening are happening for a reason. So, moving forward, moving forward, we just have to pray for help. So, uh, anyways, let's get on to it. Psalm 114. This is, it's eight verses, so this should go pretty quick. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to take a second and blow my nose, because if I don't, I feel a sneeze coming on. So here's some dead space. The biggest thing <clears throat> that I'm worried about down here is mold um, because I don't know how much was here uh, the inspection the inspection the house inspection said that they didn't find any and we have a spray it's a it's a great mold control spray that we used in the old house that we never had any problems with uh, I don't know about inside the walls but I know on the surface level, we shouldn't have too many problems, I hope. But this does, this is causing me to think of, we have to fix the problem first, and then I will rip the carpet up. I don't want to rip the carpet up and put new carpet down and then find out that we didn't fix a problem, I gotta... We got to go one step at a time, but enough about me, <clears throat> enough about our house. Let's, uh, let's get into God's word. I need, I need something today. Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel, his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. 
Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like lambs, and the little hills like lambs. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. I'm sorry, it's that two words are right on top of each other. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back. Ye mountains, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing stone, the flint into a, mount, into a fountain of waters. And that is it. <clears throat> Should we go through it a second time? Um, let's go through it slowly. Think about what it's trying to say here. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language... Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. Of course, that could be the exodus. The sea saw the people and pulled back and fled. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. So it opened up. What ailed thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou wast driven back. Ye mountains, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Well, it was because the people of Israel, God's chosen people, were pulled out. And God marched them to a certain place. And everywhere they went, the world was opened up for them. And it says it right here. Tremble, thou earth, at the presence of, God, of the Lord, <clears throat> at the presence of the God of Jacob which turned the rock into a standing water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Any people, any nation that walks with the Father, with God in front of them, has nothing to fear because the seas will be turned away that the mountains will skip away from them. That they will have a clear path to wherever they're going. I was, um, one of the things about one of the things about the Exodus um, I remember was when they went out for 40 years into the wilderness for 40 years not even their sandals wore out their clothes didn't wear out their sandals didn't wear out they themselves didn't wear out those that fell away fell away but for those that made it through nothing wore out within that 40 years i can't even get a pair of shoes to last for six months and these people made it through 40 years because God allowed that to be 40 years he opened up seas made the mountains open up so that they could travel through God did that for his own people and God's people are anybody that comes to him and, and obeys his commandments and listens to him What in the world do you think he could do for you? That's why I, that's why I pray today, Father. Let the, let the waters coming into this house stop. Let them cease. Let us be able to fix this place, 
Father, with your great power, fix this house. If this is where we're supposed to be, if this is what we're supposed to do, if this is where you have led us for the reasons that you have, whatever reasons that they may be, Father, I ask you, please help us. Help us fix this. Help us do it right. No matter what monetary value, no matter how much sweat and pain and effort we're going to have to put into it, Father, help us find a way. If you are his people, if you are if you are one of God's children, he will take you and he will lead you and help you wherever you need to go. That's what did it say again? I gotta open the book back up. Tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Can you ask can you ask the sea why did you flee? Can you ask the mountains why that they skipped like rams? And you will you will answer. You will tremble before the might of the Lord. starting to get cold. I didn't put my jacket on because I came down here and it was so hot. I don't know why it was so warm down here in the basement. Usually it's cold as heck, but today it was hot. But now I'm starting to get cold because I have the fans turned a certain way and they're starting to blow the blow the wind back at me. I'm a little worried. I'll, I, again, I... Tuesday was rough, man. Yesterday was rough. You know, you, you've you you think you find a perfect place, and you find out how many problems it is. And you know, we've yeah, we've made the joke about it being a money pit, and it's not really a money pit. It's like it's not like the whole house is falling apart. It's just. It's got that 1960s electrics still in it. You know, the the inspector said that half of the plugs that he he saw aren't grounded properly. How can you how can you do that? How can you put three prong plugs into most of all the house and not ground them while you're in there? What the heck is that? the uh the water pressure is weak and the the water itself is so soft and we've done everything we can to try to harden it up a little bit but it's so soft you never feel like you get completely clean and you never you know it never feels right and the water pressure is terrible cuz he said that he thinks that it's just a uh, build ups inside the pipes I don't know how to fight. Uh, even if we professionally cleaned it, I mean, it's just, it's all just monetary. <laughs> but now it's, um, now it's the, uh, the, res the, the pool, the, you know, the sump pump pool underneath the house. I've, I've started noticing that it fills up too quick, even when it doesn't rain. Um, we, I was just told on Tuesday, actually, that we live in a high water area. That no matter what we do, we're going to have to put up with the water. Um, it, it's so bad since we've since we moved in, we've noticed that the city has been putting in a new culvert down the street culvert i guess that's what is what it is culvert i don't know what it's called uh but it flows underneath the the road and it allows water to go through 
and they they dug a new drainage ditch. Uh, but also at the same time, there is a, a field behind the house, cornfield or whatever, where they were digging up the entire field and laying down this uh, this like networking of pipes. And we didn't know what it was. We thought it was irrigation at first, but I kept saying, it's way too far down to be irrigation. This is like six, seven feet down. So that's not irrigation. That is drainage. The water on the water here is so bad that you have them installing uh, some kind of water drainage in a cornfield. And everybody's houses, everybody's yards out here flood, which is con completely insane that there's the drainage ditches don't go anywhere. Um, they all need to be redug. Uh, I'm sure everybody probably needs to have a new culvert underneath their, their driveways. I know we definitely do. <laughs> we definitely do. Ours is all mucked up. Um, I got a good look at it before the waters, you know, before everything started hitting and, uh, we need to clean ours out. But I was, I was telling my wife, I said, man, our, our drainage ditch is non-existent. I said, it's, you know, we have the semblance of a drainage ditch, but whenever water gets into it, it's just all over the place. It doesn't go anywhere. I said, that's the first thing I got to do is I got to dig it up. We didn't, we didn't know about any of this. We didn't know that, uh, we didn't know that the drainage dish was that bad until after we moved in because we moved in in October and if, you know, that's whenever start starting to get cold and you're not really, you know, worried about much and we weren't getting any rain, you know, it was dry as a bone through the entirety of September and then you know October starts raining and we're like holy smokes <laughs> you know we we have no drainage and, and I couldn't get out there and fix it because I was having problems with the sump pump because the old the old sump pump pipe that came from the house uh had split open halfway through and we had water bubbling up beside a tree because there's, we have two trees in the front yard that, because the water table is so high, they have rooted up. That we have roots growing all over the yard. And that should have been our first sign, but we didn't know. You know, we were, we were talking about killing the one tree anyways. Um because we didn't want that tree. The other tree is nice tree, but it's just got roots coming everywhere. So we we said, you know, it's it's not like it's the worst place in the world. Um but the old pipe for the sump pump went it followed the sidewalk and then it followed down the driveway out into the drainage ditch. Uh, but there's big, huge tree root there and nobody ever bothered to fix it. Nobody ever bothered to take care of it. So you had water every time the sump pump would come on, you'd have water that would come up and flood out the sidewalk. And I said, well, I got to fix that. I got to redirect the, redirect the water. And so I redirected it the only way, place I could, which is down the front of the house out to the drainage ditch. And that was when we started finding out just how much water is actually coming into the house. And it's too much, man. There's too much. Something's going on. I don't know what. Just feels like I'm unloading problems. Maybe that's what I need to do is unload problems. I don't know. But it's just... The electric's bad, the water itself is bad, and the drainage is bad. And of course, now we're finding out that the septic tank needs to be drained. We were told that it was, we were told that the septic tank was, was drained two years ago, but since we've had the rain, we've had, you know, septic backing back up into the house. 
which means it could be flooded or you know it could be clogged or something but these guys say that they can't they can't work on that until they actually drain the septic tank and i'm like well let's just drain the tank i'm okay with that you know let's let's drain the septic tank and then we'll at least start on a we'll start on on a pure footing that way we'll know it'll be done that way you know we can we can know what's going on because again the people that we bought the place from they i don't want to say they lied but they definitely didn't tell us the whole truth you know they didn't tell, definitely didn't tell us everything we should have known and you know we're we don't know anything we're we're making this up as we go along we 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 don't understand <laughs> we we don't know how to live in a house with a well with a septic tank with all this stuff you know nobody ever told us this nobody ever really told us how to take care of a house i mean i kind of know but not like this so i'm um, just playing it by ear I'm hoping that we can uh, we can get this stuff sorted out. I know I'm not we're not going to be able to sort it out immediately, but it gets to you, man. It gets to you. It's like I said, I I had a point I had a point on Tuesday where I was just like, what the heck. And I think the conversation that I had with uh, I had with my wife later on that day, I think I said it a couple times, and it kind of hurt her. As I said that, you know, if we choose to continue to live here, like you know, if we don't do this stuff, then we might as well just move out. And I think she took offense to that. She didn't say it. And I feel sorry for saying it, but at the same time, that was where my head was. It's like I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. But God let us here. God let us here. He put us in this house for a reason. I don't know why. I don't know what we're here for yet. I know the house is big enough for family, for friends. It's. <laughs> It's big enough. I just don't know yet. I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know. It's a place that... It's a place that we've always wanted. It's a place that we've always dreamed of. It's just moving in and finding out all the problems. Just really, it hurts. It just kind of hurts. <clears throat> so let's talk about me. Let's talk about something else. Um... Uh, the new distraction, it's war. <laughs> As I wake up today, and that's all everybody's talking about, and I'm like, you know, if they're distracting you with war, then what are they distracting you from? And some people, man, they are... Some people are saying, oh, this is going to be nuclear Armageddon. We're all going to die. And I'm like, what? Really? Like, we're talking about nuclear war again? If nuclear war is even a thing, if, if nuclear radiation is even real, I don't even know anymore. I'm not even going to. I'm not going to go into that stuff, but, you know, you you listen to the guy that went around and was supposedly eating radiation pellets. I don't know. I I get it. I get that it, it could be fake. I get that it could be real. So that's something that I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get into. But, uh, yeah, people are, are just freaking out. They're talking about... Um, 
we are officially talking about places in America where there are safe places to live and where the first nuclear strikes would hit the worst. That's where we are again. <laughs> we were we were there back in the 90s, in the early 90s. I remember whenever people were, you know, talking about this kind of stuff. And we're there now. It's like, what? no, I don't think so. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to say that the world is going to end, but I'll tell you what, I don't think the world is going to end, you know, like that. And if it does at this point, then it's probably, it's probably some false flag or something, which is now you have so much other stuff to worry about. Not just nuclear strikes, but, you know, cyber attacks. Cyber attacks and, uh, you know, the power grids failing. And, you know, all this other kind of stuff that you don't need to blow it all up. You just need to shut it down. What are we going to do when it shuts down? I mean, that's how crazy, you know, that's how that's what we're talking about now. That's what. I don't think people understand. That's exactly what we're talking about now is what's going to happen whenever they, the powers that be that are trying to kill the world, what happens when they decide to shut it down? So you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. You're not going to have food. You're not going to have water. You're going to have nothing. So what are you going to do? Because they can do it. It's, it's ridiculous how easy it would be for any country to just shut their own power down because we've given them control of everything we gave them control of everything we still give them control of everything they should not have control over our our survivability but they do because people wanted people wanted the government to have control of this stuff oh they can deal with it so much better than we can we want to go and, and have our bread and circuses. You know, as, as long as we can watch football on Sunday, we'll be okay. And that's what you did. You gave everything over. You gave everything over to a foreign power. And I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about a, a foreign country. I'm talking about a foreign people. A people that were outside of you that have been breeding in secret for generations, have been teaching their children in secret for generations, that you are nothing to them. These people teach their children from the day they are born that they are better than you. That's, that's a hard thing for people to understand, is that they, these people are being raised differently than you. They may tell you, oh, well, we're just a, this is a good old boy from Arkansas that, you know, wanted to be president of the United States and he grew up and he managed to get it. No, no. They're taught from an early age that it's okay to lie to the people. That you can grow up in the richest houses in the world, but you can lie to the people and tell them anything they want to hear. Because you're nothing to them. You're scum to them. See, whenever we raise a kid, we raise a kid to, to love everybody. We, we raise children to love everybody, to be nice to people, to, you know, share, to do all this stuff. But if you're raised from a family that doesn't care about other people, what are they going to teach their kids? They're going to teach their kids how to lie, cheat, manipulate, steal, hurt, because they're going to teach them that anybody that is outside of the family is not is not worth giving time to. And that, again, goes back to what I've said before, is there is no inherent good in people. You have to judge them by their fruits. You have to judge them upon what they do and how they do it. 
You can't just take people at their word anymore. And again, don't listen to me. <laughs> don't, don't listen to me. I could be just as bad, if not worse. I don't think I am. I could be, and I could be very well leading you astray. And I've said, if, if that's the case, then I would rather you stop listening to me. I'd rather my subscriber count, my view count go right down the toilet. It's pretty close. We're floating right now. But I would rather that happen than anyone take anything away from me that, that it's not true. But when it comes to these people... They are okay with lying. You can All you have to do is go watch politicians. Go watch politicians right now. Because it started out slow. I mean, you know, they've been, they've been building up to this for, you know, 70 years, which is a generation. Uh, within that generation, we've had two groups of, you know, at least, at least two groups of kids. We're the, we are dealing with the grandchildren of the people from the from the 60s and 70s, you know, or the before that. Anyways, actually, no, we're dealing with the children from the 60s because they're in their 50s now. They've been they've been running things for about 30 years. Anyways, you, you get the point. This is the people that were out in the 70s, 60s and 70s. They were a little bit covert with what they were doing, with what they were saying, you know. They were screwing people over and lying and cheating and all this stuff, but at least they had something to back them up to, you know, help people believe the lie. Nowadays, these people now, they don't care. They're just straight lying to your face, and they don't give a crap because they know that the general population is not going to go pay attention. It's either that or the general population is so manipulated and so lied to that they're not going to worry about it because they have the they have the news on their side, they have the fact checkers on their side, they have everything they need in order to be able to control your mind on their side so they can go up there and they can say whatever the hell it is they want to say on TV and you're just going to eat it up because they know that they have you. They have you lock, stock, and barrel because you've been... You've been slowly pulled into this trap. The people that started this way back in the 1910s, the 1890s, when they started developing this banking system to where they could run everything, they were not thinking about doing it just for themselves. They had all the money and all the power and all the stuff that they could ever want. They didn't need to worry about it. They had it. That's fine. But they said... It's a generational thing. We will make it to where our children will be able to have more power than us. And we will make it to where our grandchildren will be able to use the slaves however they want. These people are taught this. You cannot believe everything that comes out of these people's mouths anymore. You just cannot do it. They were taught this from the day they were born. They go to different schools. They go to different schools. They are taught differently. They're taught the secrets. They're taught the secrets of, of all the things that we were never taught. All the things that we, we can only think about talking about. You know, the the uh, the different conspiracies, the, the way things are, are... The way the world was made, the way the world goes, the... Uh, you want to talk about the history, the, the hidden histories. You know, they're taught about that. They're taught about the symbolism. They're taught about numbers. They're taught numbers in a way that we can never understand. That we, we can only scratch the surface of with gematria. These people are taught from the day they were born how to do this stuff. And then they go to different schools. They go to Yale. They go to Harvard. They go to these places. They take the classes that you don't get to take. That's why it's so hard to get into these classes. I don't think people go into these these places because they have the good, you know, the best GPAs or they get scholarships or whatever. And when you're in there, you're still not taking the courses. You're still not taking the 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 play the 
you're still not getting the learning that they're getting. Because they have a secret way of teaching their children that you don't get to have. That's how they know things that you don't get to know. And they go and they meet all the people that you will never meet. And you, they, they, they exist in the realms that you will never get to exist in. And they, most of all of them become politicians. And, you know, I mean, most of them, if they're, they're not politicians, they, they, if they find out that they can, you know, play music or, or, or act, they get thrown to Hollywood. They get thrown out to Hollywood. They get thrown into uh, music studios to where they they push whatever agendas they, they want to. These are generational families. Nobody gets famous randomly. Nobody randomly gets famous. They get pushed in some way, shape, or form. And you can just do the yeah buts. And you can think that, oh, yeah, you know, such and such was this amount of famous, this amount of famous. But you take that famous person that you think is there because, you know, they, they fell into it. That you, you believe the lie that somebody said they fell into this, you know, either actor's role or this, you know, these musicians fought their way from the bottom and now they're here. You believe that lie. But if you go back into that person's past... And you find the sacrifice that they had to make in order to get there. Either a family member or a, you know, a friend or somebody that mysteriously and tragically died and caused them to have their hero's tale of rising up past that point to where they could get famous. You'll find it. It's there. It's always there. There's always a story of oh my you know my mother died and I'm doing this for her oh my my best friend died I'm doing this for him or you know oh our bass player died and we're doing this for him or you know there's always that story because that's part of the ritual that's part of the sacrifice they have to make and nine times out of ten these actors these musicians these politicians they're all related to each other. All of them. First cousin, second cousin, third cousin, it doesn't matter. You're not related to them. They're related to them. If we were related, if we were related to the to the group, if we were related to the, the people in charge, we wouldn't be here talking about the people in charge. We would be there talking about what we can do about the peasants. That's how you know you're not in a group. And it sounds crazy and people will think, oh, you're just a conspiracy nut. You're just, you know, you probably believe that everybody's a reptile. And it, no, I don't believe everybody's a reptile. I think it's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I do believe that evil spirits and demons are probably reptiles, reptile looking. And you can see it whenever they inhabit a person. The slit eyes and, you know, the, the, the weird graphical glitches. You're seeing the spirit. You're seeing the spirit of the person that's lying to you. That's what you're seeing. That's, we've, we've talked about the seraphim. We've talked about the snake. The snake is a demon. It was a fallen angel. I... Uh, I don't want to get all into that. I don't want to do the whole winged pl the the plume serpent thing again. I don't want to get back into that stuff. <sighs> There's a lot more going on here than you will ever know. But no, I don't believe that everybody is a lizard. I remember what it was I was listening to where they talked about Oh, sorry. <laughs> actually yawned. <laughs> I'm going to blow my nose for a second. Hold on. But it was, um, 
Oh. Oh, come on now. What was it? Oh, yeah. That stupid blood over intent nonsense. Oh, my goodness. I briefly touched upon that a long time ago. Uh, way back when I first started getting into the Flat Earth stuff, there was a guy that was talking about going to the center of the map, going to the North Pole to find uh, Agartha. And he was doing his blood over intent magic because he was going to find he was going to find the garden. Because he was going to go find the peace in the garden. And I want to say that was 2016, 2017. It's about five, six years ago. And he was just starting to talk about that. And he was actually raising money to go. And there were a couple other people just, just barely talking about blood over intent. And I said, man, you cannot sign a deal with your blood. For starters, the, the Bible says you, you do not touch the blood. That is, that is a seal. That is a pact. And when you do that, when you do that in a ritual the way that they do it, you are opening yourselves to signing deals with devils. You don't do that. But these guys are, or were, I, I, you know, I was hearing that it was, it was fading away and that it was, you know, they weren't really doing it anymore. The guy that I, you know, was there, he had, he had a lot of these like, you know, flat earth beliefs and he had a lot of stuff that I could listen to. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. You know, but, uh, he still had that blood over intent stuff. And I said, Ugh. And then I started hearing other people talking about it, but then it started going away because everybody was starting to really get on to people about it, about saying, you guys are out of your damn minds. So I thought it went away. I couldn't really find any more about it, it you know. But I just saw a video uh, that was from last year where they were talking about these blood over and tin assholes are... are becoming the biggest YouTube cult <laughs> the the biggest YouTube cults in the world basically is is these blood over and tin guys and apparently there's a lot of them now that's kind of scary and uh, he was he was talking about what these people believe and, uh, you know, what these people do, what they talk about. And he was saying that the one thing they talk about is things like flat earth and lizard people, you know, associating them with what they consider to be the, the greatest, craziest kook jobs in the world. And I was just like, oh, God, that's all we need. But then it started making me think. I was like, oh, God, I was right there. I was right there listening to the one guy when he started talking about this. The guy that said that he was going to take a trip. He was going to storm the borders, jump the walls, do whatever he could to take a flight up to Alaska. And then he was going to walk from there to the North Pole. He wanted to go see Agartha for himself. And uh, I, I just... Ugh, man... But apparently these people now are saying that they're saying that the only way you can get into heaven, heaven, is with blood over, uh, blood over intent, that it's a, it's a loving pact because it has to do with the sacrifices that God told us to do? And I said, oh, boy, man, you want to talk about, you want to talk about, first of all, not, not reading and understanding the Bible, but secondly, you want to, you want to talk about how 
the enemy perverts the word. Holy smokes. But that's how bad it's become. That that is absolutely how bad it has become. It is it is festered. It is allowed to grow. Which is interesting because you can't let anybody else it's uh you'll you'll let these guys stay on YouTube, but you know I'll be damned if you if you try to talk about uh, flat earth and the belief of God and you get, you know, you get shadow banned and taken off the platform, which still YouTube will still keep pedophiles on the, they'll still keep them on the, on the platform, but they will kick off the people that are trying to expose pedophiles, which I think is hilarious. It's like, really? You want to... You want to sit there and, and, and let the let the worst people in the world get away with what they're doing, but the people that are trying to expose them, you want to you want to kick them out? Are you serious? But that sadly is the satanic world that you now live in. Because we let it happen, we let it fester, we let it do what it's doing. That the church leaders, the people in charge that are supposed to warn us about these things, they let it go uh, mostly because they don't want to lose their tax exemption because they love the money that they're getting. And because people don't want to hear harsh words, they just want to hear the soft words that tickle their ears. Because they want to believe the lie, because they want to live in their unrighteousness, because they will be fed the lie, because that's what they want, because God said he doesn't want his word being wasted upon those that don't want to hear it anyways. Over and over and over and over, I could go through it, and I could say it, and I could say it, and I could say it, and whether people get it or not, I... It, uh, sometimes you just don't know what to say anymore. You know, I don't know what to say about it anymore. All I can do is just sit back and just be like, look, you don't get your crap together, we're screwed. But then we're here. You know, we're at this point now where everything is lies. Nothing is truth. The normies... They don't care anymore. They are so, most people are so whipped. Most people are so absolutely whipped that they wouldn't listen to you no matter what. They just will not open their ears to it because they are so sure that they have the truth. So they'll just go along with whatever whatever their rulers have said. And no one will ever open their eyes and see what's happening, see what's coming, see what's going on. That's just a nightmare. It's just an absolute friggin' nightmare. So, what what can I say? What else is there to say here? Anyways, um, 
So I'm going to get going. I, um... Man, sometimes I just don't know what to say. <laughs> sometimes I just don't know what to say. Sometimes I have like tons upon tons of stuff to say, but right now I just don't. Right now I, I just, uh, with everything going on at the house, with everything going on outside, in the world the way people are the way people are acting it's no wonder why I pull away <laughs> and try to try to not get wrapped up in it because you can get so wrapped up in it, you can get so pulled down by it that you start to lose yourself. And I've done that so many times. I think I just need to go handle what's going on in my life right now. You know, I need to handle the house. We need to handle what's going on here. That doesn't mean that I, I can't or that doesn't mean that I'm I'm going to give up on a lot of other stuff. That's, that doesn't mean that I'm you know going to give up on recording videos. I've had to I've had to not record some videos and not do this because you know we had to I had to clean the house up as much as I could. But as far as trying to find out current events and stuff, maybe we just need to focus on ourselves for a little bit. Uh, well, thank you guys for coming around and listening. I will uh, see you guys next time. This was 114, right? Yes, 114. Okay. All right. I love you guys. God bless everyone. Take care of yourselves, man. Do not fear. Do not let the spirit of fear rule over you. That's all I got. You guys take care.